Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first ever Lounge and Learn. I'm Lisa Scott Founds, President and CEO of Winterfest, home of the Seminole Hard Rock Winterfest Boat Parade. We're so thrilled to partner with our friends at Crown Wine and Spirits and Republic National Distributing Company, along with famous bartender Bootleg Greg and Renee Quinn from Spirited South Florida, who helped us create this themed Lounge and Learn series. But before we get started, we've got some exciting news to share with you. The 49th annual Boat Parade on December 12, 2020 will proudly honor frontline heroes, our doctors, nurses, and first responders, just to name a few. And by going to Crown for your discounted spirits and Lounge and Learn supplies, you're helping as a portion of the proceeds will go towards a float including these exceptional people. Now, to get it shaken, we bring you Renee Quinn, a private banking professional in Fort Lauderdale, created Quinn Pro Quo, focused on providing business strategies and communication tools gleaned from her extensive client experiences. She lives, works, and plays in downtown Fort Lauderdale and conceives, connects, and creates with her community on a variety of local boards, with her most favorite being Winterfest, of course. On the creative side, Renee is part of a dynamic writing team creating unique content for Go Riverwalk magazine's hashtag Bites Plus Sips column. As Spirit of South Florida, she's our local curator of all things craft, bringing people together over the latest cocktails, craft beers, and intriguing culinary experiences. Thank you for joining us. And until we can safely raise a glass together in the same room, we hope you'll continue to participate on this virtual fun. Okay, Renee, shake it up. Hey, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And I'm so excited to create this series. I couldn't do it without my good friend, Bootleg Greg, who's going to be our expert. You'll be hearing from him in just a few minutes. But the basis of this series is we are going to have five different series. And starting tonight, we're going to teach you the classic three-ingredient type cocktail that all of us can make at home until we can get back out and visiting our favorite bartenders. So a little bit on Bootleg, he hails from Jamaica and he owns the Bootleg Bread Cocktail Company. I'm so excited to partner with him on this series and some other adventures. And he's going to walk us step-by-step, step, rum four ways with Burgal Rum. Burgal is our sponsored rum with Winterfest and RNDC Republic National. And thanks to Crown, our partners will be able to get some of our products for you guys at a discount. So I'm going to turn it over to Greg. He's going to tell you about our class right now. And thank you for joining us. Awesome. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Kathy. Happy cocktails, everyone. And welcome to our Winterfest Lounge and Learns cocktail, virtual cocktail series. Now, I'm going to be your legal rum sherper through this virtual event. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, and I'm going to walk you through what we're going to be doing. But before I do, those of you at home who are going to be participating, um, you could take a look to your left, take a look to your right. And if you have a bottle of Frugal or another bottle of rum, take a look at that rum. I want you to open it. I'm doing the age. I want you to pour yourself a little drink. And I want to make a toast to everybody. Thank you for joining us. I want you to take a drink. And Cheers. I want you to type R in the comments like a pirate. Ah. <laughs> All right, does that feel better? So like I said, I'm, yeah. I'm Bootleg Greg. I'm the owner of Bootleg Greg Cocktail Co. Started my company in 2015. I've worked with companies like the Marriott. I ran the beverage program for Marriott International for six years. I worked in Cleveland, in Long Beach, in Dallas, here in, in Palm Beach Gardens. I've worked with companies like Beach Holland Beach. America Cruise Line, like brands such as Grey Goose, Tito's, Kindred Spirits, and currently um, working a lot in South Florida with restaurants and bars. Uh, we opened Even Keel Fish and Oyster in Fort Lauderdale last year, and my latest project is up in PGA Boulevard in West Palm Beach, Taj Kitchen and Gin Bar. So please Check them out if you get a chance at some point. We're going to be working with Brugal rum today. Uh, we have two expressions here. We have their Blanco, or their Superior White, and we also have their Vidéo, which is their Extra Age. Now, Brugal is a rum out of uh, Hispaniola, or Dominica, 
order and with Haiti. Uh, there are two types of rum. Usually, we're not going to get too technical about it, but it's agrico or industrial. Agrico rums are usually made from fresh, fresh sugar cane juice, and the industrial, which Regal is, is made from the byproduct of sugar cane juice, which is either molasses or molasses honey. I'm going to be making four cocktails for you today. We're going to be doing the classic daiquiri. We're going to be doing that two ways. We're going to diversify by adding some fresh elements in the form of strawberries or raspberries, whichever one you have. Uh, we're also going to do an amped up version, uh, which is for those of you who uh, a little like your alcohol a little more forward. All right. Now, before we start, we're going to do a, what we call in the business, a bar check, come check. So, and for those of you at home who are not partaking, you can also take notes because if you're planning to build your bar at home, uh, these are notes um, that I'm offering that you can uh, write down for when you go out shopping and uh, over time you can build out your bar with the various tools and things that we're using today. All right, so first thing you always want to have, you want to always want to have a nice piece of cutting board. I prefer wood, right? You want to have some type of citrus juicer. I have two types here, so you can either have the metal one that squeezes lemon limes, or you can have this one with the auger. This one works with everything, grapefruit, oranges, the larger fruits. You always want to have great knives. Always make sure that they're sharp. You want to have your strainers. I have two types here. So this is a Horthon strainer with the spring and the mesh combination. And you want to have your fine mesh strainer. This one works. It gets out all the little fine particles if you're looking for a real clean, crisp drink. All right, you want to have your bar spoons. They come in different lengths. We have some metal skewers. If you have wooden ones, those are fine as well. You want to have your sweetening agent. Uh, we're going to be working that in the form of simple syrup. And this is one part sugar, one part water, not to get too technical. When we say parts, it's not a definite measurement, whatever you're using. So if you fill this glass with sugar, you fill it with water, you combine the two and you dilute it. You have one for one. All right. So we're going to be starting with our classic daiquiri first. Right? We're going to be doing two versions of it. Now, like I said, we're working with two different types of rum. Some people like the rum, uh, the white rum, which is the unaged version. Usually it doesn't go inside of a barrel. Uh, some people prefer the aged version, which goes inside the barrel. It's just for a number of years. It gains character, it gets flavor, it gets color. Right? These are usually made for sippings, but depending on the cocktail that you're making, they're amazing as well. Right? So the rule of thumb is you always want to start with your cheapest, with your, uh, your cheapest to your most expensive ingredients. Just in case you make a mistake along the way, you got to throw something out. You're not throwing out the spirit. You're throwing out uh, the cheap ingredients. And oh, I forgot, uh, also our jiggers or measuring agents. These are very, very, very important. They come in different styles. This is a Japanese style jigger, some jigger. Uh, we have our classic set. As long as it has the measurements on it, so you can play along, it's fine. We're going to start with our lime juice. And the ratio that I always use, a lot of people are very conscious about what they're doing right now, what they're putting in their bodies. Um, people are shying away from the excess sugar. So uh, you'll see a lot of daiquiri recipes out there, and they call for a one-to-one -one ratio, which is one part sweetener, one part um, citrus. But I like to tone the sugar down a little bit, and I do three quarters of sugar instead of the full one ounce. So again, and these are really, really juicy limes. So I managed to get two ounces out of one. Very rare. Right? And this, guys, this is called a cheater tin. And again, you know, if you're building your bars at home, um, this is another tool that you want to have. You want a tin and a Boston shaker combination, right? And write these numbers down. They come in all different sizes, but the ones that you want to get, you want to get your cheater tin at the 18-ounce size. You want to get your Boston shaker at a 20-ounce size. Right? If not, they, they really don't work together that well, right? So three quarters of an ounces for your simple syrup. Okay. 
and then we're going to double that two ounces of rum. Two ounces of white. And of course, last but not least, you want to grab your ice. And ice does three things. There are three things um, that you're doing when you're adding ice to your cocktail. One, you're going to add volume. So like I said before, we're using a eight ounce coupe glass. And if you were doing your math, we only have four ounces, three and three quarter ounces of liquor here. There's two ounces of rum, there's one ounce of simple syrup, and there's, I'm sorry, one ounce of lime, and there's three quarter ounces of simple syrup. So we got to make all that fit into an eight ounce glass. And the way you do that uh, is by shaking. And what you're doing is that you're adding water. Uh, you're also the flavors together when you shake, you agitate it and make the flavors combine together because you're working with ingredients with three different pH. You have your sweetener, you have your lime juice and you have your alcohol. They're all different pHs. So you got to really agitate them to get them together. And you're also manipulating the temperature, so you're making it cold and refreshing for consumption. Right. Everyone playing along with me? I'm playing. All right. So, Greg, go um, Greg, in case I don't have some of the ingredients, I do have some limeade in my refrigerator. It has a little bit of sugar in it. And sometimes I, just cheat. sometimes I cheat and use this because I don't want to spend the time squeezing the lime. I know, again, I'm a home bartender. No, that's perfect. But I squeeze the, the lime brand, today. Mm -hmm. The brand that you're using is perfect. Um, Simple is a really great brand. It's actually one of the brands I use at home. Um, they use all fresh juices and their ratio to sweet, uh, of sweet to citrus that they use is really, really good. So it's not going to be overpowering. So what I would do, I would do two ounces. If you have the simple limeade at home, I would do two ounces of the limeade and two ounces of rum. And that's it. Got it. Guys, while we're shaking, if you have any questions, um, please follow them in the comments section. You're going to be answering them as we go along. All right, so our drinks all nice and shaken and cold. Now we're going to do what's called a double strain when we're using the Horthon strainer and the mess strainer combination. And the reason I'm doing that again, I want to end up with a clean, crisp product. Um, when you shake the cocktail, what happens is that the ice breaks down and there might be ice shards in there. I don't want them in this cocktail. If you can see inside the strainer, like nice little ice particles, I want to leave that out. And I don't know if you can see the difference here, but there's a tremendous difference with the, the different colors of both cocktails. And the only difference between uh, the two cocktails is the different rum that we use. Um, you have this nice golden hue, and that is because we use the, the aged rum. And then you have this nice, crisp, clean, classic daiquiri um, that we use with the white rum. And of course, no drink is complete without the garnish. Typically, for daiquiris, you want to do a wedge, a wheel, or a lime. And your garnish is always going to be a representation of what you're drinking, pretty much. So we wouldn't use a grapefruit in this case because uh, there's grapefruit nowhere in this cocktail. So the aged daiquiri, I'm garnishing with a nice lime wheel. <laughs> And the nice classic daiquiri from Garnet. I made Ready, a cheers. dark. I made a dark version. Cheers. For gall dark rum. Cheers. I did cheat a little. I used half real lime and half lime. That's great. That's amazing. 
and it's nice and tart. I prefer a tart cocktail. But yep. the beauty about exactly. being at home is that we can make our cocktails any way that we want. And exactly. I think you just have to not be scared to try different things. And I like the tip. I usually put the liquor in first. So I like the tip to put the liquor in last in case I mix up the ratios. Yep, it happens. It happens a lot. Even to me, I've been doing it over 20 years and it happens. And again, you know, like Renee says, when you're working at home, the, the main thing you want to know is the basics. You know, once you know how to get there, then after that, you can get there your own way, is what we like to say. So if you like it sweeter, of course, not set in stone, go ahead, add an ounce, add an ounce and a quarter of simple syrup, take it to your taste. If you like it more tart, do less, go half an ounce. And, and But that's the beauty of when you build a cocktail at home um, by yourself, you're able to manipulate the ingredients wherever you want. Like I always say, I tell Renee all the time, there is no right and wrong. There's only preferences and bites. And one thing to think about, guys, is the reason I picked these cocktails. These are three-ingredient cocktails, but they're also known as sours. And if you don't happen to like rum right now, you can actually use a different base spirit, but it's exactly the same ingredient. So if you have sugar and you have citrus, you can add tequila, and that makes a margarita. You can add gin, and it makes a gimlet. So, again, we're building on the bases right now. We're going to teach you how to make the basic cocktails. Again, I love rum, the summer of rum. So I thought it was the perfect cocktail to start with here in South Florida. It is. And just to expound a little bit, uh, a lot of you guys might take cruises or you go to the Caribbean and you might be saying to yourself, well, that's not a daiquiri. That's not what I have when I go to Jamaica. That's not what I have when I go to Puerto Rico or DR. But what they make is also a daiquiri, but that is a frozen daiquiri. If you look in any bar book and you're talking about traditional daiquiris, this is what it is. It's a three-ingredient cocktail with sweetener, citrus, and rum. And then what you had are variations of it. Right? Any questions, guys? If not, so we, we're going to move so on. So we can basically take what we just did. We could have thrown this in the blender if we wanted, right? Yes, you could. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that so ice I that we shook it with, we poured it in a blender. Yes. Uh, so can you just, I came in a little bit late. So simple syrup is just equal sugar to water, right? Yes, yes, traditionally. But okay. then um, if, if you do your research, you will see other versions of it. There, there, there are also light simple syrups and there are heavy simple syrups. But usually traditionally when you're making your simple syrup is one part sugar and one part water. And just to explain a little bit about what the part is, it's not a definite measurement, but whatever measurement you're using with, so if you fill this with sugar, you fill it with water, you combine the two, and you have a one-to-one -one ratio. If and you if, want to you speed the process, some, if you make some ahead of time, like how long will it keep? If I uh, it will keep up to a month uh, refrigerated. So make it ahead of time, keep it closed, and keep it in your refrigerator. The less oxygen gets into it, the longer it stays. Uh, it's actually um, almost unperishable. Thank you so much. Great question. All right. So it's springtime. All right, so we're going to add, we're going to take that same daiquiri and we're going to show you how we're going to add a little depth, a little variation to it. Now, um, I chose raspberries because raspberries, um, they're great because they add flavor and um, they add color, but it's, actually, it's also one of the fruit with the lowest amount of calories and carbs. So if you're somebody who's watching your carb count and watching your sugar intake, raspberries are one of the best fruits to use as far as making cocktails. I'm going to be a little generous. I'm going to do, I'm going to do about four, right? I'm going to put that in the glass. And if you have raspberries that are really, really ripe, um, they don't take a lot of work. I'm just going to use my bar spoon and kind of muddle them a little bit together. But you don't have to. Uh, you could just add all the other ingredients, and you, you're going to see what's going to happen when we make the cocktail, right? So we're going to do our simple syrup, and because we're using raspberry. And again, guys, you got to pay attention to the ingredients that you're using uh, because one, the addition of one ingredient kind of affects the ratio of the others that you use. Great job, Renee. You muddle it. Right? So I'm going to dumb down the simple syrup a little bit. Remember, for the classic daiquiri, we went one ounce of lime juice and three-quarter ounce of simple syrup. Because I'm using the raspberry and I'm aiming this cocktail towards people who are carb-conscious, I'm going to down the sugar content a little bit, and I'm going to kind of make up for that with the flavor from the raspberry. So 
instead of three quarters, I'm going to be going half. All right, and then we're going to go with our lime again. Of course, always fresh. And again, guys, I see there are a lot of products out there, uh, fresh lime juice in the stores. Uh, nothing against them. Some of them are really good, but there's nothing beats the freshness. Um, the taste of the lime juice starts to deteriorate immediately after you juice it. So even though um, the ones that you buy in store, it says fresh and it's pasteurized, nothing against it, but nothing beats the real thing. All right, so we have our half an ounce of simple syrup. We have our three raspberries. We have our one ounce of lime juice. And because we're using raspberry, it's always a little better if you want to maintain the profile of the cocktail that you're making to go with the white rum. Not to say that the dark rum would not work in this situation, but the color and the brightness of the raspberry is going to be dumbed down if you combine that with a darker flavored rum. So we want to keep that raspberry profile. When somebody looks at it and they see the raspberry on it, they immediately know that that's a raspberry cocktail. And the way you do that is with the white rum. And of course, this is one thing that's never going to change in the formula is the amount of rum, right? So two ounces. Again, if you like it a little more forward, go two and a half. That's fine. All right, so we have all our ingredients in. What I like to do, I want to stir it up a little bit. And I'm going to add um, another depth. Right here I have, of course, if you don't have it at home, please you know, you can always get it some other time. Don't worry about it. This is Peshard's bitters, right? And what bitters are, you hear the word bitters, of course, it does taste bitter. But it is an extract from roots and herbs and bar, and it's alcohol-based, right? So if, a lot of people don't know. If you look on the label of any, of most bitters brand, it, wow. it actually has the same amount of alcohol content as the rum that we're using or a vodka, usually 40%, 45 44 they're about. But the best way to look at it, what this is, this is the salt and pepper of the bar, right? In, in the back, the chef has his spices, all his seasoning. These are the seasons of the bar. This is Peshar, it's one of the most common one out there. You guys may know Angostura, but then there are a myriad of flavors, right? And this is a aromatic bitters. Um, it's very citrusy, predominantly orange. So it kind of blends into what we're doing. And what bitters does, again, is salt and pepper, it flavors, and it actually helps the, the flavors combine. So because we're adding that element of the raspberry, we're going to tie that all in together, add some crispness, a little bit of depth with the peshars, right? So I'll do two drops in there. Right. And then I'm going to go ahead and want to add our ice. Seal it up. Smaller tin at the top, the bigger tin at the bottom. I don't do it as good as you. <laughs> it takes practice. <laughs> All right. I always have a of hard course. time getting the tins apart. What's the trick? This. Um, because you're using metal, Renee, when you shake it in the ice, it actually contracts. So it tightens up. So if you hold it like this, okay. if, 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 if you look at where uh, the small tin starts to separate from the large one, what you do, and of course you're going you're yeah. gonna to make a spill, but over time you use your, um, the, the bottom of your palm and right where both tins interlock and starts to separate, you hit it right there and it pops out every time. Sometimes it takes more than one hit, but like that's the okay. trick of it. And the longer you shake it, the more it's gonna contract and the tighter it's gonna get. But right where it starts to separate, you just hit it and it okay. opens up. Okay. We had a All question. Right. Okay. Guys, we'll see how good I get at this. Um, yes, question. So there was a question, what kind of bitters did you say, Greg, Melanie? Um, yes, so. Linda wanted hard. to know. So this was invented by a Haitian medicine man. His name was Dr. Peshard. And um, a pharmaceutical company took it and took his name and manufacturing it in New Orleans. And it's one of the, actually, one of the foundation bitters. There's this, there's Angostura, and there's Reagan, which are the three foundation bitters in America. And this is probably one of the cheapest ones you can get. This is a 
12 ounce bottle, uh, probably going to run you about maybe $15. Goes a long way. All right, so shake, separate. And we're going to double strain. And if you look at the difference, guys. Flavor of the raspberry, it, it just kind of amps, it like kind of makes it um, very bright. It brightens up the back from the yep. line. Yep. And of course, like we said, your garnish is a representation of what's in your drink. So we're gonna get a little fancy with this one. We have raspberry, we have lime. This is where a skewer comes into play. I made a lime wheel and I put the raspberry on top of the lime and I'm gonna pierce that. And I'm just gonna press that on the cocktail right here. Right? As you can see it, so we have a nice raspberry daiquiri garnished with a fresh lime wheel, metal skewer, raspberry on top. That's beautiful. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Renee. That's amazing. So, guys, I met Bootleg. He happens to shake up over at Even Keel. I don't know if you've been there yet. Um, he Max's restaurant on Federal Highway in North Fort Lauderdale. But Bootleg makes some of my favorite cocktails because he's not afraid to put different ingredients together. And I'm comfortable enough to sit down at his bar and just tell him you know, what I want, what base spirit I want, or what type of drink I want. And he's always been able to shake something new for me. So again, I thank you for joining us and helping us through this adventure and teaching us how to make our cocktails at home right now. Oh, of course. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions, guys? We're going to take this up a notch. All right. All right. So I'm going to make my absolute favorite daiquiri or my absolute uh, favorite version of a daiquiri. And for all you scholars out there, uh, this one was accredited to famous author, uh, Viridian Ernest Hemingway, right? And, um, you know, he spent a lot of his time in Cuba um, drinking, getting drunk, writing novels, and uh, this daiquiri was named after him, right? So for this one, you're going to need grapefruit. You're going to need lime juice. You're going to need the maraschino Italian cherry liqueur. All right, we're going to need your simple syrup. You're going to need your rum. All right, ready? Again, we're starting with our cheapest. And I think Lisa, Formos. I think Lisa's going to make a drink right now with you. Of course, yeah. I've got my <laughs> awesome, Lisa. You ready? All right, Lisa, shake it up. You have an amazing setup. <laughs> All right. All right, so we want to start with our lime juice. And I'm going to do three quarter ounces. And open a door of grapefruit. I'm going to use my other juice. I bag. like your squeezer, uh, Greg. I like the, the squeezer Thank that you. you have. I have a, this is with my grandmother's, and this is the very first factory I made for my dad in 1971 or so. Oh, wow, that's bar. amazing. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to do need a, a little half an arm ounce. muscle. I'm going to do a half an ounce of grapefruit juice. We want to do half an ounce of simple syrup. And I'm going to do a half an ounce of Marino cherry liqueur. And guys, if you've never tried this liqueur, um, it's a little on the expensive side, about $33 for a liter. But if you've never tried this liqueur, it's 
it is amazing. And um, it's, you know, Chairman, also a great substitute. Again, if you're watching your show calories, also a great substitute for uh, sweetener. to make a cherry flavored daiquiri. You could absolutely throw out a skin of cherry and you'll be doing two cherry flavor in your daiquiri. And you will have it on we have our grapefruit, we have our lime, we have our corn. And we have, and I'm doing two ounces. And again, Does get anybody my, else uh, at your home bar have any questions? What, Talkers, they're all drinkers. <laughs> right. I know. No, um, well, we, I have, we have all a my remedy for that also. in my mixing glass. <laughs> yes, I have all my ingredients in my mixing glass. And because I'm working with so many ingredients, I'm working with grapefruit juice, I'm working with lime, I'm working with simple syrup, maraschino liqueur, and rum. There's a lot going on. So what I usually, what I like to do, I like to stir it before I chill it. And the concept behind this is if you ever try, if you've ever tried to dilute honey using cold water it's, it's really really hard right so what i do i kind of blend everything together at room temperature first so they actually blend together a little bit more before i add the ice and the shake hey greg um you cut out a little bit a little bit so there was a question was it a marcino cherry that you used no a liqueur so it's a liqueur an Italian okay. liqueur that's made from actual maraschino cherries. Yes. So the flavor it the flavor of it is very cherry like. Yep. Uh, that's cherry. Right? So we have our ingredients all blended together. Okay, so this is the so, proper way um, to do it, guys. Yes, Greg, right? I'm gonna look in my refrigerator. I wanna ask you a question. Hold on. Of course. Going in my refrigerator. So I happen to cherry jam, very fresh tart cherries. If mm -hmm. they didn't have the liqueur, could I put a spoonful of this cherry jam? Oh, absolutely. Go right ahead. The taste might be a little bit different, and then the color is, is definitely going to be a little different. Mm -hmm. But um, go right ahead. Okay. And of course, your alcohol content yes, is going to be less, uh, less. That's an alcohol. Right. I'll, I'll make mine three ounces of rum then. There you go. <laughs> All right. How are you doing? Hey, oh, Kathy. Come on. All right. So we're going to get a little technical here, guys. And again, I have a Collins glass. Um, our previous three cocktails were um, straight up in a coupe glass. We're going to get a little fancy here. So I have a Collins glass, right? And I have. Again, if you're building out your own bar, you want to impress your friends, it's a great gadget to have. This is called a Lewis bag, right? And what is uh, the use of it? If you don't have those fancy freezers at home that makes you all different types of ice, um, you would really get some cookie points from your friends. You pull out a Lewis bag, right? So it has an opening, you put the ice in it. All right, you close it up. And you get your mallet. I have a Thor's hammer. And again, um, I'm just trying to use a different type of ice. If you have fresh cracked ice and you want to use that, feel free. Go ahead. Um, no judgment here. All right. And the cool thing about when you crush your own ice, you get to manipulate how fine you made the ice cubes. If you want it really, really fine, of course, you go ahead and you pound it all day. But I like my crack, right? So you got your Collins glass, got your loose bag with your ice. And a glass. 
and you pack it up, guys, all the way to the top. So you have your rice prepped. We have our mixture. We add our rice. Hi, Lisa. Go ahead and you do your shake. You separate. And I wish you could get the scent that's coming off of this. The grapefruit mashed with the cherry. Mm -hmm. Time and the rum is just amazing. Sounds right. delicious. And what you're gonna have here is this amazing grapefruit color uh, daiquiri over ice. It's the perfect patio pounder for the warm months. But we're not done yet, right? We gotta make this pretty. So again, pro tip: um, bitters has a very high alcohol content and it has a very very um, high pH, so it's very light. It's lighter than the pH of all the other ingredients that's in here. But what happens when you add this to the top of the cocktail, it's going to float, right? So, again, you're going to show off with your friends. So we add the bitters on top, and it sits right on top there. Making wow. this amazing two-tone color. Yep. All right. And then we're going to show off a little bit more. We're going to garnish and again your garnish is always going to be a representation of what's in your cocktail um we could have used lime but um grapefruit's a little bigger and shows off a little bit more so what i like to do with a cocktail like this i just rest the grapefruit on top cover the entire cocktail i got my nice little tiki wooden straw and I actually punch a hole through the grapefruit. And there you go. Your Beautiful. Midway daiquiri over crushed ice, loaded with Peshar's bitters, grapefruit at top. And again, you know, you could take this a little further if you want to drop a cherry on there. It's the possibilities are endless. Greg, we have another question from Linda. Is this a drink most bartenders can make? She's thinking she would like to try it before buying the liqueur. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially in South Florida, most bartenders should know how to make it. Uh, they should. Um, like I said, this cocktail is named after Ernest Hemingway. It's a popular rum cocktail. But um, I'm sorry, what was her name again? This is from Linda, Linda Kidwell. Yes, thank you. Great question, Linda. Now, Linda, um, the Q, uh, again, I'm going to give you a little bit more behind the scenes uh, info. Um, the Q, when you go to a bar and um, whether or not you order a certain cocktail there, number one, you look at their inventory. So this is a predominantly rum cocktail. You want to look at, okay, what kind of rums do they have behind the bar? And you ask the bartender the question. Ask them about the spirit first. And depending on their answer, that will tell you whether or not um, they can make that cocktail. Um, you also look at their tools, their gadgets that they have set up. If, they don't, if you don't see jiggers and shaker tins and bar spoons and stuff that looks like they're ready for a mixology, um, I, I would stay away from having this cocktail because it's very easy to mess this cocktail up if it's not made right. But if it's made right, it's one of the most amazing cocktails you can have. And I think, Greg, locally, of course, you have them at even keel. But I know that Burlock Coast on the beach and uh, downtown, the Wilder, uh, probably uh, the Riverside Hotel has some amazing bars inside uh, Preston's Bar or the Golden Lion. I think that, again, uh, going to one of the bars, like you said, and, and looking at what's behind the bar and uh, asking, not being afraid to tell a bartender what you really want. I think the worst thing is for me to say to you, make me something, but not giving you any, anything that I would like. I think that would be hard for you to really make me a cocktail. Yeah. And I think the biggest obstacle to whether or not they're going to be able to make this cocktail is whether or not they have this uh, maraschino liqueur. Um, most bars may not have that. But if, if, they, if they're serious about their mixology and 
in any way, shape, or form, this is one of the liqueurs that they definitely will have. Uh, you mentioned some bars there, Renee. Uh, Unit B. I'm not sure if they're open back yet. Yeah. They're inside. Um, what's the name of that brewery? Brat, um, the Brass downtown. Tap. The Brass Tap. The brass so you go inside the Brass Tap. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's a little red door, and it goes upstairs, and it opens up in this amazing 1920s speakeasy type lounge. That is a great little secret cocktail bar. Great for a first date. Um, great for a surprise date. Uh, I go there all the time. It's an amazing place. And I think like Apothecary is also a very like kind of speakeasy. You go to eat pizza yes. at Pizza Craft and boom, right next door is this amazing cocktail bar. Yes, yes. And what you're going to see um, with a lot of these bars, uh, that's you know, the fact that we were closed and a lot of the owners and a lot of the bartenders who had time to really up their game and think and uh, really revamp their system, you, you're going to see there was already a big resurgence or a big push in the cocktail program in Fort Lauderdale, I thought. Um, the year and a half I've lived there, I've seen like great change um, towards the mixology uh, um, side of things. And I think uh, when bars open back up, it, it's, it's going to trend even more towards that. Uh, for a very long time, when I moved there a year and a half ago, and when I used to come here six years ago, working at the Palm Beach Marriott at Bistro 1001, oh, you want a good cocktail, you got to go to Miami. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think um, South Florida, north of Miami, have really stepped their game up. Death and Glory, those guys are amazing. Uh, Driftwood, Del Rey, I think, is an amazing drink in town. So a lot of those bars on the strip, they really know what they're doing, and the bartenders are really stepping their game up. It's just great to see because Florida is an amazing place. Ingredient cocktail. So today we use the citrus with sugar and we added rum. Next week we're going to really shake it up, cha cha cha. We're going to do tequila and we're going to make a margarita. So we're going to have a masked margarita. Our theme today was tropical. Next week is going to be the masked margarita. So I'm looking forward to seeing your your views and your costumes. Let's get let's get what's fun with this, guys. I mean, right now we're not able to go out. We're not able to dress up. I actually put lipstick on today, probably for the first time in like 60 days. So it's a lot of fun. We want to make this fun. We want to answer your questions. You can go to Spirit of South Florida or Winterfest and, and let us know what you'd like to see, what you'd like to learn about. But I'm really excited to do the margarita next week because I have some MacGyver ways of making margaritas. We'll see how well they go with what bootleg Greg is going to make for us. Awesome. So you have your strainers, your Horthon strainers, and your mess strainers. You have your citrus juicer. Um, you could either do the metal ones. These are good for lemons and limes. Or if you have the big ones with the auger, these are better for oranges and grapefruit. Um, you want to need your bar spoons, your cutting boards, your bar knives. Make sure it's really, really sharp. There's nothing better behind the bar than a sharp knife. Have your jiggers for measurement. You have your shakers, again, you want to, it comes in a set. So this is called the Boston shaker, guys. And you want to pay attention. You want to get the 28 ounces, it's important. Um, and then you want to get the cheetah tin, which is the small version that fits inside, which is 18 ounces. So these, sometimes you'll get the 28 ounce tin and you get a 16 ounce cheetah tin and it does work, but the 16 ounce goes all the way in there and it doesn't leave that room for you to shake. So you want to go 18 and 28 for your shakers. Um, we're doing margaritas, so we're going to be doing rocks cocktails and cocktails that are up. So make sure you have your rock uh, your glasses, your old fashioned or your double old fashioned glasses. Uh, make sure you have your limes on deck. You have your salt. There you go. All right, All right, so we look forward to seeing you next week and uh, excited, can't wait. Just want to clear that up. It's actually June 11th is our next presentation. Yes, June 11th. So we're super excited and Crown Liquors, as I meant, um, they are sponsored for this series and they are giving a um, percentage back to our vote parade in order for us to have an awesome display saluting our hometown heroes 
doctors, nurses, first responders. So please support Crown and think about that and uh, RNDC and their products. So we're super excited and thank you, Bootleg Greg, and thank you, Renee Quinn. We really appreciate it and hope everybody's doing really well and we'll look forward to seeing you on June 11th. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 Thank See you, you soon.